Welcome to Life Is, proud part of the Bethel University Clarion Podcast Network. I'm co-host Zach Walker. And I'm co-host Abby Pouts. Today, Life Is Gatherings. We'll talk about burst eardrums, double butter burgers, and eating family meals over Google Hangouts. We'll discuss themed birthday parties, questionable Back to the Future plot points, and the star of Happy Feet and nothing else, Elijah Wood. And even though we're supposed to be talking about gatherings, we'll probably talk over each other about other things, and maybe talk to some folks over at the award-winning Clarion Newsroom. Because life is gatherings, but life is everything else, too. Life Life is is drop now. now. Okay, so today, life is gatherings. What's your um, favorite gathering? I was thinking that. Just dinner. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you you answered it for me. Next question. Okay. My favorite gathering is dinner. Um, (laughs) Um, No. (laughs) My favorite gathering? My favorite gathering I've ever been to? I mean, yes. I don't know, like a like an elementary school birthday party, oh, like that's, that's a those, really good one. Those are pretty exciting. Like at the age where it's still themed, but like you're old enough, you're old enough where it's still themed, but it's not like it's not just like awkward and you're just like hanging out and like talking about girls. I don't know, but I yeah, I remember uh like. I, as a child, would have, like, I had, like, a Hulk-themed birthday party, and that was, like, pretty sick. Had all my friends over. One, um, (laughs) yes, Sam uh, asks in the chat, would it be fun to do a themed birthday like that now? Okay, Um, so people do that all the time. Like, girls, girls have themes for their birthdays. I don't. I don't like my birthday. I know you think that that's fake, but I just don't like my birthday. Yeah, because you think you like your birthday more than more than the people. No, I don't. I really don't. I believe that you're doing it for attention. (laughs) I don't. (laughs) That's just me. My roommates, though, for my 21st birthday this past fall, they did it like mystery themed, and that is my favorite thing ever. And so I loved that. Like that was my favorite birthday, but. I don't Wait, what like was, what is that? What does that mean? Like the theme was the genre of it mystery? was like yeah, so or, like we were all like think of the game like clue. We oh. were all people <laughs> and like we'd go around reading our little like cards and oh, had to figure out who it was. So you played a murder mystery dinner. Yes. Is what you did. Yeah. Those are fun. so that was super fun. Um but quick, like people quick story. have Okay. Sorry. Sorry. You, no. you can go. No. No. Okay. No. Uh, quick, quick story about murder mystery dinners in high school. My friends and I got like really into them for like one summer and we did a couple of them <laughs> uh, because they, they take a lot of planning. Yeah. And both of them, both of them had the exact same ending. Oh, both of the mystery dinners and the people for the second mystery dinner, there were some, like all of the people who played the first one were there plus some mm-hmm. other people. So when we got to the end, everybody who had already played it just knew what was going to happen. And it was unbelievably disappointing. Oh, so mystery dinners are really hit or miss. Um, really hit or miss. What were you going to say before I rudely interrupted you with my awesome oh, story? Oh no, just, like there's theme birthday parties all the time. Like I watch some reality TV. Don't get mad. I I do. <laughs> Not to get mad. I watch <laughs> Surv- I think Survivor's the best show on. Television. Okay, but that's like different reality TV. I'm talking about like exactly. Bravo. Exactly. Like Scott. That's Survivor's a great. <laughs> I put in Survivor Scott. is good. Yeah, it's it's amazing. But they do like theme birthday parties all the time. It's like this huge thing and I just don't think it's as good as like having like cowgirl theme for your like first grade birthday party or something. Like that's way more exciting than being an adult and like going to a themed birthday. That seems silly, right? Or no? I don't know. I think that's kind of culturally accepted as like, as like, oh, you're uh, like, you're, you're, you're taking back like child, like childhood imagination. 
and you're doing a fun, you're doing a fun childlike thing. I don't think somebody's going to look at an adult doing a themed birthday party and say like, you're not a good adult. <laughs> I don't know. What's uh, what's the lamest theme for a birthday party you can think of? Ooh, like I don't a, know. Like a government themed birthday party. Everybody yeah. has to dress up as a senator. Yeah, that <laughs> would that be fun. <laughs> Scott's theme idea for a birthday party is green olives. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great theme. What's the food? All green olives. Everybody has to dress in green. And the only conversation point is green is olives. Is olives? Um, no, green olives. Oh, Please. I think people the, can do that. People love olives. <laughs> the superior. Yeah, it's a big, great theme. Um, I had a friend when I was going to school in Madison that um, when she was a child, she had a happy feet themed birthday party four years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> like, so they just ev use the same decorations. And ev every year for four years, this girl, um, her theme was the 2006 film Happy Feet for four years in a row. Oh because, my gosh. That wasn't even a good movie. It is timeless. Um, <laughs> I, Will, our friend Will is listening in and his jaw just dropped, which uh, <laughs> his jaw dropped and made him look surprisingly like, um, what's his name? What's the Happy Feet Penguin's name? I have no Will, idea. turn your mic off and tell us. You know? Is it happy? Really? Is that true? No way. I don't know. I just said happy because. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to say that that would be really disappointing. Um, Love when Will. Lace. When Will. Lovelace? No way. That's, That's not. That is not. Mumble. His name. Gloria. Norma Jean. These are the things I'm seeing. All what I did was you, look up happy feet main character. <laughs> what are you looking up? <laughs> the, the first two of the first names were Lovelace, which does not sound like a character in a movie that kids can watch. And then Norma Jean. <laughs> I'm telling you, look up Happy Feet character, main character, just on Google. Happy Feet main <laughs> character name. I didn't look up name. Oh, yeah. Lovelace, Mumble, <laughs> Ramon, Gloria, Trev. Trev was voiced by Steve Irwin. Norma Jean. Wow. Boss. Um, happy <laughs> Sam says Mumble is the main one. Oh, okay. Voiced by Elijah. The, main, the main protagonist is Mumble. Yes. Yeah, That's the awesome. hero that we all deserve. Happy <laughs> Feet has a star-studded cast. Yeah, I was looking like, wow, I had no Robin idea. Robin Williams, Nicole Kidman, Elijah Woods, Steve Irwin. Scott said Elijah Wood is not Toby Maguire. I don't know what I, that I means. I don't get that. I, mean, I he's love Toby Maguire. He's right. He's not wrong. <laughs> that they're not the same person. I wonder if Scott thought this whole time that Mumble was voiced by Toby Maguire. And now he's, he's understanding that it's not. Oh, they kind of look similar. Is that what he's talking about? I just looked him up. Elijah Wood and Toby Maguire? Yeah. They look kind of similar. Uh, Elijah Wood was in Flipper. No way. Oh my gosh, he was. That, that's your... Wait, do you know him from anything else? Nope. <laughs> Are you serious? You know Elijah Wood from the movie Flipper, and that's it? No, I didn't even know who it was, but then I know Flipper, so I clicked on that one. Okay. I don't so know. You, know, you don't know who the actor is. You know no. Flipper, and then you looked up Flipper, and then yes. he was there. So you do not yes. know any other, any other famous Elijah Wood roles at all? No. I guess he was in Back to the Future as a little kid. I don't remember that. No, I don't think you would. Back to the Future is like was... way too good for him to be in, I feel like. He had the smallest part. 
That was an insane statement that you just made. I'm so sorry. That Back to the Future is too good for Elijah Wood to star in. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you, you know that Elijah Wood played Frodo in Lord of the Rings. I, I don't I don't watch that. Sam is holding up the one ring. <laughs> I've never seen that. I'm so sorry. Come on. Who is you Frodo? haven't seen Really? No, I don't watch it. I'm so sorry. I haven't what, seen what Harry Potter either. What do you mean you don't watch it? It's not like a TV show. I don't know. It's like sci- sci-fi. Like that's just not my. You're just saying favorite. genres now. <laughs> You're just saying genres that are wrong. <laughs> watch, watch Lord of the Rings. You'll realize that it is leagues above Back to the Future and probably leagues above the Flipper. You don't, don't like drop Back to the your, Future? Don't drop your jaw. You have Back to the Future is so good. I'm mad. <laughs> it's okay. Will said, Will, hop on. This is Will. He's the design commander for the Clarion. Um, explain what you're talking about in the chat right now because it's a really good point. Uh, what's with the mom thing in Back to the Future? <laughs> it's it's really horrible. Yeah, I mean, it's like super weird. You understand what the mom in the thing first is. in the back first to, yeah back to the future yes. yeah like what what Michael J Fox tries yeah. to do <laughs> with his mom? Do you not know? No, I do. I think it's fine. <laughs> it's just a, it's just it's just a movie. Like it's just a movie. I don't know. I love my like, so I feel like I just have to support him. Like, have you guys seen Family Ties? Probably not. I'm the only 80 year old on here. You have Sam. You're, you're I love you're Family Ties. <laughs> I love Family Ties. Is I don't I don't know what that is. I don't know either. It's, it's really Michael, old. It's really cute. Yeah, he's Michael, Michael J. Michael, Fox is in yeah, it. Yeah, he's he's they Alex P. Keaton in it. You're on with his so, mom in that too. No, yeah. <laughs> you're saying so. You're saying Abby, you are not 20 years old. You are 80 years old. I am convinced <laughs> that you are an 80 year old grandmother because what you just said is that because you like Michael J. Fox from Family Ties. It's yes. totally chill that in the first <laughs> Back to the Future, he goes back in time to try just, to slam his mom. That's what happens. The, it's just part of the plot. <laughs> Why? Does it? Yeah. it doesn't have to be. I know. <laughs> exactly. I just think they're good. Not every movie is good because it has a plot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh man, what a well, what a watch list that we have given our uh, our viewers. Watch Back to the Future, Flipper, Happy Feet, and whatever else Elijah <laughs> Wood is in. I guess. <laughs> Next up, we've got a Clarion Design Commander, my good friend Will Jacot, Clash Royale <laughs> expert. Yo. Well, how the heck are you? I'm doing all right, you know, just kind of hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Is that your? Is that kind of what you've been doing these days? Just kind of hanging out. Yeah, a lot of that. Um, a lot of Clash Royale. A lot of um, not, you know, sort of doing school, but like not really. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. Are you still out here? Not to expose you on the podcast. Are you still out here with like? <laughs> Classes that have just had online homework and just stack up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, and it's like I, I, I'll check the Moodle and uh, like just miss, just like straight up miss like a ton of stuff. And then <laughs> uh, I'll be like, all right, I'm, I'm looking all right. And then uh, like I'll check it like three days later, and I like I just like blatantly missed like three assignments, and I'll be like, all right, well, I'm gonna do that now, I guess, but. <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah. been it's been fine. Yeah. Just fine. Cuz cuz you've been Will and I worked on the on the texture project together mm-hmm. and we we did a lot of the same stories. And Will like you've been working really hard over quarantine with like the videos and Clarion and all of that. So okay. like even though even though like sometimes classes like you miss assignments, you're still like working long hours, right? 
Yeah. Um, I was talking to my roommate, um, John about this last night, but, uh, like I've been, I've been working on a lot of stuff and, um, even, even before like quarantine, like the classes that kind of didn't seem as important were kind of already Mm -hmm. for me, at least just kind of slipping. And now it even, I feel like has, um, made that like divide between like, like the things that feel important and the things that just kind of, I don't know, don't feel as important, uh, more clear. So it's been interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Abby, have you felt that too? Like prioritizing things that you think like really matter and yes. Okay. School yeah. is like at the bottom of the list for some, <laughs> like I'll just Candy crush it. is number one. Yeah. No, and Clash like Royale. <laughs> walking my dog and like hanging out with my family. It just seems to be way more interesting and intriguing. Mm-hmm. I feel like, um, when you all have like a common goal, like when you have roommates, like you all have a common goal of getting stuff done during the year. So it's easier to do things when everybody's doing homework. But when your yeah. parents are like goofing off playing phase 10, like I'm going <laughs> to yeah. play. Of course you're going to play phase 10. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I so, walked up. I have like my whole office set up in the basement and I walked up the other day and my parents were playing a game of Stratego. <laughs> <laughs> which is a which is a board game that they have never played, but they found it because I have a ton of board games in my closet, and they were just like locked in playing Stratego, and I'm like, what is what is going on? What am I missing? But I, I totally agree with that, and I think it's like before when we were all at school and everybody was going to class, all of that. Like I feel like hanging out with your friends and doing fun things was like this luxury. That you could do after you got your homework done. But now that we're in quarantine, you're either never hanging out with your friends or like Will, in your case, you're always with your friends because you just live in a house. Yeah. So then it becomes like schoolwork is the is like the secondary thing, you know? Yep. Well, it's like, you know, I, I figured that we would all kind of be like working like the whole time. But it we did that for like a week and then we got like burned out. You know, of just yeah. it was like there was no boundary. So it was just like either you worked for like 12 hours for the day and that was your day. And then like the next day it was just like, OK, I don't know. I did that yesterday and I'm going to do nothing. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just like a weird there's just like no structure to anything anymore. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, I don't like it. I don't agree. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting through with Clash Royale. Yeah. So, um, so we don't end this segment without completely, without not talk, without talking about the uh, topic at all. <laughs> Will, you're a before quarantine because they don't exist anymore. You were a big concert guy, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are bigger concert guys, but I well, like like concerts. Yeah. I think compared to your regular like concert plebeian, you're a uh, you have a lot of concerts under your belt. Like, how many have you gone to? Oh gosh, estimated. Um, probably like twenty, twenty-five. Okay, maybe. okay. that's a decent amount. Like, I've gone to two, and one of them was in seventh grade, and it was Train, <laughs> Train, and Maroon Five at the <laughs> State Fair, yeah, State Fair Grandstand. Oh, oh my goodness. And, I it's the best playing. place to see I concerts. Remember, I think it's so fun. I remember I had an old Samsung like slide phone. You slid it up, and it was the it was the texting. And I recorded moves like Jagger, so I could set it as my ringtone. And the the quality awesome. was so unbelievable. That is awesome. It was. It was a good time to be back there. So, Will, do, well, do you have a um, you have a specific uh, concert memory that stands out? Um, yeah. Well, I I guess I have two. Well, I saw the second time I saw Rainbow Kitten Surprise. Um, great band. Also, if you haven't listened to them, but it's a fantastic. Abby, have you heard them? No. They awesome. sound like a they sound like a meme band, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're, they're not. they're not yeah okay they're, they're so good check them okay. out yeah but i was i was standing right 
um, right by like the speaker, like right up front. And I don't know, I was like, a, I think this was sophomore year, so I wasn't really thinking about like my ears, but uh, I think I like burst my eardrum because I was standing right next to the, like the giant speaker. It was like right here by my ear. And uh, I don't know, it started like bleeding and it hurt. And, uh, <laughs> Wait, at this point, are you still thinking that you burst your ear? Well, I was like, I was like, There's... I don't know, maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I like, went to the I'll... bathroom and uh, just kind of like stuffed some like paper towel in. And then I just went back out because I wanted to continue listening to him. And then like the next day I went to the Bethel nurse. And I was like, hey, I think I burst my eardrum yesterday. And she was like, no, I don't think you did. And, <laughs> and Wait, that was just kind of it. <laughs> did she look in your ear? Yeah, she was like, ah, I don't think so. And just like, that was it. Do like, you notice the difference? Like, yeah, well, yeah, I can't, like, I can, I think, I, I think there's like scar tissue. I think it just like heals and there's like scar tissue. So I think it's like fine. I can like, you can yeah, hear fine quite as well but okay fine. also i love that you started out the story with it was my sophomore year i wasn't really thinking about my ears <laughs> <laughs> like now that you're now i am i guess like, yeah my ears like, are so important to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> every every year of life you gain a new awareness of a new of my ears. <laughs> <laughs> junior, junior year was ears <laughs> so sophomore year was ears. Yeah. wait no, so was that the extent of your like medical visits was going to the <laughs> Bethel nurse once and having her say you're fine and then leaving? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, now that I'm aware of my ears, I probably would have uh, done a little more to it, but um, I don't know. I was just like, all right. <laughs> I guess <laughs> <laughs> what a way to live yeah wow. that's insane my uh, ear was ble did you tell her yo my ear was bleeding yesterday yeah, yeah like well, what was, did I, you come out of your ear i was like hey uh so like my i went to a concert yesterday and it like started bleeding and kind of hurt kind of bad and i think i burst it and she like was like oh yeah and then she like looked in it she was like ah I think it's in now kind of <laughs> like, like, just like, she was like, just don't like, she was don't like, she said, don't put like eardrops in it just in case. So that's pretty much the only thing I did was I didn't put eardrops in. I just looked it up. I, why I would have. <laughs> and I think you did. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, your, your wow. I think everybody except I guess the, the nurse. nurse would have said that he ruptured his eardrum. That's insane. No. I think it was just an earache. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't I don't know, frankly. You know, whatever. But uh oh, no, no, no. do I have time for another story? Because I have another <laughs> Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah. I was at the Tame Impala concert, um, which was at like the Surly Festival Ground um, this summer. And my roommate and I, John, um, this dude was standing next to us and he was kind of like jittery. And um, he like all of a sudden, it was like halfway through the show, he just like straight up passed out and was like on the ground. And um, I don't know. I don't know if he was just like like a serious. Hey, Scott. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the deal was, but he passed out. Was on the ground. Everybody kind of like it was like a. We were in like the mosh pit or whatever. And everybody kind of made a like a circle around him. We we're all just kind of staring at him. And uh, the security guard came up and just like lifted him over his shoulders like this big security guy just like whoom, over the shoulder and like just took off running and there was just like a path like clear path and they like went behind the stage and that was it i don't know at all what happened to him but it was like a linebacker running through a crowd with the guy over his shoulder it was i don't know it was wild 
It was an absolutely wild. Yo. Like, Did the concert stop for that moment? No. Or was it just, it just continued? Yeah, there was like was going on. And like, I think they did like the smoke show or whatever. And so like oh, that wow. was happening while he was just like trucking through the crowd with the guy over his shoulder. Oh my he God. actually, the guy actually passed out completely no heartbeat nothing and then through the crowd comes the best nurse <laughs> takes his temperature because <laughs> it's fine and then she leaves. Uh, that's hilarious oh, that's what happened um that sounds like a like the climax of a spy movie or something like that yeah like that was that was some planned out thing that that somebody was like i don't know that that guy maybe was was a mob boss and they finally saw their opportunity very well could be wild so are you since obviously we can't go to gatherings anymore i guess if if you're smart you won't go to gatherings anymore um <laughs> a lot of artists are doing like online concerts and stuff have yeah. you have you tuned into any of those well yeah um uh john mayer did one a couple I think it was like a, like last week. Um, and then John Legend did one oh, uh, nice. like a month ago. But my One of my roommates, it was on Instagram Live. It was super cool. He, he one of my roommates, uh, like requested that he played Brid, Bridge Over Troubled Water. And he did. And it was like sweet. It was so good. It was the best what? cover Bridge Over Troubled Water I've ever heard. That was John Mayer? No, John Legend. Oh, John Legend. Yeah. Wow. That's, That's so crazy. Like, did, did John Legend like call out your yeah, roommate said, on the he said, chat? No, he didn't. He didn't call my. Well, he said like, "Oh, somebody wants Bridge Over Troubled Water. Like, I'll do that." And then just kind of like did it, and like it's so <laughs> awesome. Yeah, wasn't looking at like notes or anything. Just kind of started playing. Just, wow. Yeah, That's was, crazy cool. That's so cool. It's a good job, Abby. Ryan. Yeah, good job, that guy. <laughs> Abby, have you tuned into any? Any concerts? No, no concerts. I, I don't think I can. Crush. Yeah, I don't think I can get in the vibe of it. Like, I don't know. Maybe I could. Maybe I should try it. But I think going to concerts are such like a different experience, and they're so fun. Like the next day, you literally are so sad because you had so much fun the night before. So I don't know if I could do it. Maybe. Um, have you done it? Have you listened or watched any? No, I have not. Yeah, no, I should. My mom tells me all about him that like she sees on Facebook and stuff, but I haven't. <laughs> I haven't tuned in. I mean, I think the key might be just like really acting like it is a concert, like yeah. screaming and jumping around, yeah. like punching people, yeah, like break stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At the John Mayer concert. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. They're kind of like a nice. They're usually. A, the live ones at least on instagram or whatever are much more chilled out so i i've just been kind of like if i see there's one i pull it up and just kind of have it on in the background and i don't know yeah what's better uh instagram live concert or um monday morning magic with lex thompson <laughs> well I, I don't think anything can top that i want him to do another one that was unreal it, he, was, unreal. it was like the best thing i've ever seen that's trick. It was David Blaine style stuff. Yep. Yep. It's on his Instagram if you want to check it out. At Lex Thompson. I don't know if that's <laughs> right. But go Got check it. him out. Morning Magic. Yeah. Well, I think what we've learned here is we need to go watch Lex Thompson. Yeah. And if you burst your eardrum, you didn't. So, <laughs> Will, thanks for coming on. This was a yeah. blast. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next up, this needs to, I got to, this needs to start. This needs to start for everybody. If you just want to have a better time in quarantine and like improve your life overall and be my friend, everybody should get a Catan Universe account. And <laughs> Will is holding up Clash Royale. You should also so play Clash Royale and join Will and my clan on one. So go and join that. Um, also, also make a Catan Universe account. 
Um, it's Settlers of Catan, which is the best board game of all time. Abby, are you into Settlers of Catan at all? So never played lame? it. All I know, yes, I'm lame. All I know about Catan is that my nerdy boyfriend and his three best friends play it. They get together and they play it. And I just can't imagine it being like something like exciting. <laughs> it's it's He's so exciting. Be so mad. <laughs> it's yeah, so he exciting. It. He should he should be um he should be mad at you for that. And he loves it because he's a cool guy. Um, yes, it sure. is. So, yeah, it's the best. You, the thing about yeah, Catan. Yeah, what is it? That's the thing. The thing about Catan is if you explain it to somebody without playing, it sounds pretty horrible. <laughs> like, it sounds like something <laughs> that nobody would ever want to play. Because let me explain to you what Catan is. You are a settler on an island called Catan. And the goal of the game is to build the biggest settlement. And how you build settlements is you farm for resources and you trade those resources to other players. And then you build little, little houses and little cities and roads and you expand and you do that. So like explaining it, it just makes it sound like farming simulator, but it's way better. Um, and it sounds Skitan like a different type of monopoly. Um, it's not no. that at all. It's okay. not that at all because because unlike Monopoly, um, it was built for reasons other than just teaching children that capitalism is bad. <laughs> so that's what uh, that's that's what Catan has going for it. Um, Catan has, I mean, Abby, you're you're definitely in. I guess I don't know if you're in the minority of like all people ever. Probably not. But like everybody, like a lot of people love Catan. It's a huge, it's a huge game in the board game world. But Catan Universe is a online version of this. You can get it on iOS or Android or browser, which is my favorite version. <laughs> and then you can play for free with two other people. And you can hop on a Google Hangouts call and you can play some Catan. Um, Will and I so play Catan, have played Catan on Catan Universe, and it's a good time. It needs to be more than it's a not a two-player game. It needs to be more than two. So or could you, you play with two? You can't. Regular okay. Catan is either three to four players, or if you get the expansion, you could play with five to six players. Uh, but so on usually, I can only get one of my parents to play a game with me. So I'm going to have to try and get them both to try this out, because I'll try it, and I'll update you Monday if I like it. Well, they would both. I mean, if you're just going to play with your parents, you ought to just get the game and like get the board game version. Oh, okay. Unless you want to like, unless you all have like computers and you want to like log on and sit in the together. living room, you can do that. <laughs> because on the on the online version, uh, you can only play with two other people unless you pay, and then you could play with like four or five or six. But oh, so three, how many can you play with, like total? Uh, with a regular game, you can play with three or four. Except it's on the forty-four dollars. Really? It's usually yeah, that's what it says. <clears throat> oh, then it's forty-four dollars. Oh, it doesn't have a sale on it. Then usually you can find it on. It is worth every penny, Sam. It's the best board game ever. Yeah, um, I would rather of... buy so many other things <laughs> than this. Like the... Except every review has five stars. Except okay, the most recent one says it's a great game for two people. <laughs> so Abby, Abby, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> You could, with the money that you spent on a Justin Bieber sweatshirt <laughs> earlier this year, you could have bought two copies of Catan and had change. So that's that's where we're at with that, Abby. Um, I would like to say that my Drew sweatshirt, so it's not even Justin Bieber, it's just like his clothing brand, is yeah, the best so sweatshirt I've ever bought in my life. And it was worth it. Well, why is it the best sweatshirt you've ever bought? Just the quality. The quality. So you bought it for the quality of the fabric is why yes. you bought No, I thought, it was, I thought it was so cool. I'm, was just, it I'm more trying of to be young. <laughs> Have you heard the <laughs> podcast? I'm old. I you need borrow. to fit in. <laughs> you're 80 years old. You're wearing <laughs> Justin Bieber clothing. <laughs> so everybody go out and get Katan Universe. And add me. My name is King Scoopy. 
after the Culver's <laughs> mascot. Um, so go and go and add me and play me in Catan, why don't you? All right, so next up, we have the Bethel head softball coach, Penny Four. Hi, Penny. Thanks for coming on. Hi, thanks for having me. So in like 20 seconds, give us like a rundown of what you've been doing personally since we got the stay-at-home order and since we're not at Bethel anymore. What have you been up to? Uh, Well, um, as a team, we try to connect um at least twice a week just because having having the connection that that we lost has been has been really hard to go through together but we've been trying to get through that together and then um i reach out to the players weekly individually uh either call or text just to talk to them check on them see how they're all doing and then just looking at things moving forward trying to plan for the future talking to our recruits for next year planning out if softball happens in the summer, how we're going to recruit in the summer and just looking forward to the 2021 graduates and 2022 graduates and how to get more people at Bethel. Oh, wow. Awesome. So how often would you meet before um, the virus, like during the regular season? In the regular season, we go six days a week. Uh, Our off day depends on when we have games, but Practices are two and a half to three hours. And then when we have games, we actually play double headers. So usually it's about a six hour event from beginning to end. And then we'll have a meal together as a team also. So are there any, like, are there any actual softball things going on? Like are the players like practicing on their own or anything, or is it just like totally cut off and you're just uh, like going over Google Hangouts and stuff? (laughs) We're, we're allowed to talk to them about softball skills. Some of them, <clears throat> excuse me, some of them have sent me video because they can send video and we can analyze video together. Uh, we also have a technology that we use on the end of our bats. It's called Blast Motion. The president actually graduated from Bethel. So that's how we got hooked up from that with them. But that gives us like metrics and analytics for their bat path and their swing and all kinds of high tech things involved in softball um i'm not requiring anything right now just because i know that there's things that are a little bit overwhelming with school and the transition and honestly with softball it's hard to practice on your own the specific skills so as far as direct softball i'm not requiring it but they're welcome to do it if they have access to things (laughs) But I am encouraging them to at least work out three times a week. Coach Meyer has put together a strength um, and conditioning program that's a body weight program for all of the athletes that's really good. It is very challenging. I will say I tried a couple on my own. Um, but more to have them to stay physically active for their mental health as well as just something else to keep their bodies healthy too. Mm. So tell us about how you're trying to keep the team connected socially. Like what do those, what do those get togethers look like? Sure. We, uh, we do the meetings. Like I said, we do them twice a week, mostly unless there's, there's sometimes that things come up and we change the schedule. But initially it was me giving updates a lot and talking talking through things, talking through um, what we want to do emotionally, spiritually, and just trying to lead them through that. But then as we progress, I wanted it to be more led by the team because when we're together physically, um, I do lead things, but I like to have the team take on leadership goals. So I actually split the team into groups of three or four. And so for the last five or six meetings, I think we've had the group leaders take over, do meeting takeovers. So they get to come up with whatever they want to do with the meeting. And we're trying to keep it light and have some fun right now. So one day the group came up with do a scavenger hunt and uh, around your house. And one thing was, what's something that you think is in your house that's not in anybody else's house? and then share what that's about. And then um, something that represents your quarantine. 
and then just something that's really special to you. So that was that was kind of fun because that gave us a look into people's homes a little bit and just what people are going through um, and, and what they're holding, holding near and dear during quarantine. Um, and then we've done things like send in your most embarrassing story and then we would guess who it was. We have one coming up that we had to send in our baby pictures. So I'm guessing we'll be trying to figure out whose baby picture is who. So we've we've been having some fun on on top of our normal connections and devotionals that we do as a team as well. Yeah, that's really cool that you're still yeah. keeping the whole team connected, even though obviously you can't have practices. Um, yeah. Tell, tell us about how, how are the seniors dealing with this, that this was their final season. Some of them were maybe maybe starting and playing a lot. How are they dealing with that? So we only have uh, two seniors this year who um, have been incredible leaders through the whole thing. We were actually in Florida when we got the news just about to start our spring break trip and we got called back. So oh, wow. yeah, that was, that was, it was, it was a really interesting timeline because we got there on Thursday thinking that we're going to stay for the week and just knowing that we, things might be different when we get back, but at least we have a week of softball and being together because our spring trip is really, it's one of the things that really knits our team together because of the way that we do life for that week. Um, but then, so Thursday, we, we got down there on Thursday, started, had practice in the middle of practice. I got the text that the MIAC season was canceled. And so I didn't tell everybody until after practice because I wanted us to just have one last practice together and enjoy the Florida sunshine because it was 80 degrees and beautiful down there. And then after practice, I kind of, I shared the news with everyone. Um, and then by the end, and, but I said, we're, I, I still remember, we're, I ended the team meeting with, we're going to have a great week. We're going to make the most of this. We're, we're going to send Hannah and Alexa out with just a great week in Florida and have memories for them to last a lifetime. And then within three hours of me making that statement, I got the call that you need to get the team back as soon as possible. Mm. So, um, and that's kind of how the whole trip felt is that as soon as I said something, something changed. And so then I had to backtrack and, and, and change but we were allowed to stay and play on that was friday night so there was no way that we could get back on saturday anyway so we got to play on saturday um and then so it was the the nice part about it is even though we didn't have a lot of time we were able to pull together a little bit of a makeshift senior day for them and we had, we had a lot of parents there so after our last game we had just a just a little bit of time in our captains talked about our seniors and our coaches talked about our seniors and we just got them little things from the team including a team poster from the picture of the day before and um things like that but they they handled it incredibly while we were there in in the in the midst of so much changing and still we when we go to florida we stay in houses so each one of them is a house leader so they still had to leave their house and get everything set up to leave while they're dealing with this emotionally. But um, since they've been back, we've been having some talks. Both of them are great students. So there's small possibilities of grad school if, if that works out. So there's a chance that they can come back, but we're just not really sure yet for them. Um, but it's been, it's, they, they've handled it really well. I admire both of them and, um, they're always fun on our call still. We're still having a good time, even though it's a lot to take in. Mm. That's yeah. really cool. So when you say that uh, the seniors have possibilities of grad school and then they could come back, are you saying like they, they would go to grad school at Bethel and then still be eligible to play softball? Yeah, the NCAA and the MIAC have been working really hard and and i mean as as with the rest of the world um the information changes kind of it feels like by the hour but in previous years the MIAC has had a policy in which that only four-year undergrad students could compete in competition 
And in, in all of this, I've learned that we're the only D3 conference in the country that has that rule because people can be in grad school and still compete, except for in the MIAC. So what the MIAC has done because of this situation has granted that people can either have a fifth year. So if people weren't, if people were going to be back at school and still still at Bethel finishing their undergrad, they, they'll be able to compete next year. Um, and this is just spring sport athletes. Uh, this isn't this doesn't go for winter or fall, but um, so they can they can compete another year if they have a fifth year of undergrad to take, or there's a waiver for this year's seniors that if they stay at their school and attend grad school at the school that they've done their undergrad that they could play a fifth year. Hello. I mean it's it, so. okay, and and the two seniors there's there's a possibility that they'll take advantage of that. A small possibility. There's uh, the programs that they're looking at. We have to make sure that they can get into the programs and, and things like that. So it's still a little bit sure. of a process for the two of them. So that's why it's kind of up in the air. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Penny, I'm impressed by all of like the measures that you guys are doing for the yeah. team to keep connected and all of that really awesome stuff. So thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, I, I would say this this isn't unique. Uh, thank you for the compliment, first of all, but this isn't unique to me. Um, our athletics department has done a really great job. We get together as coaches once a week and, and talk and talk about the updates with NCAA and MIAC, but just kind of check on each other too. So it's it's really it's really all across athletics that people are – trying to stay connected with their teams just because of the way that we are connected when we're together and the amount of time that we really do spend together. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really refreshing to be at a place like Bethel where, and in, in specifically our athletic department where we all care so much and put the kids first um, along with our sports. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it, Penny. Yes, thank you guys. Have a great day. All right, you, you too. too. I didn't give up Grimace. I was thinking the same thing. We've talked about so many other, like, the guy from Happy Feet. We're leaving Grimace out. This we can podcast. talk about Grimace in the uh, deep questions. <laughs> um, Scoopy, although Grimace is kind of like, Grimace is my man right now. Like Scoopy's always been there for me. Scoopy was was part of my has been part of my like Xbox gamer tag since I was in like ninth grade. And he's the best. Get some Scoopy tokens at Culver's. Although I never I never got those. Because I don't buy children's meals. Like a lot of adults oh, do. Man. <laughs> what's up with that? Is what's they up with can't adults eat it buying? All. That's the thing that I don't believe. I think you're maybe you're probably doing it for the Scoopy token because let me no. say the deal it is a good deal. You don't get nearly enough food. Like I I don't know. I don't I don't get like how you can have that little of an appetite that you can't eat a, like a regular Culver's meal. Maybe you well, don't have I, to get okay. like a double triple butter burger with a large fry and a giant Dr Pepper, but. The Happy I, Meal or the, the Culver's Scoopy Meal, whatever it's called, you get a Scoopy token in there that you can buy like a free scoop of, of custard, which like that's what? huge. That's like a $3 value. Um, Yeah, Don't, I went there the other day to buy cheese curds and they were $4 and like they were 100% worth it because I was really hungry for those. Well, yeah, Culver's is the best fast food chain out there. That's because you're from Wisconsin. For some I, reason, what? you guys love Culver's. Culver's is quick trips. That's all you guys talk know, about. We know quality. <laughs> this is why we love Culver's. You you throw a dart at a Culver's <laughs> menu, you are not hitting anything that's not great. They do not have one bust on their menu. So I like Culver's because I like ice cream. I it's, don't it's know custard. what's in their... On, okay, I don't know what's in their um, kids' meal. Because I don't eat meat. I'm sure they have a non-meat option, but I'd rather just make something myself, like, and just get fries. But 
I wish like at restaurants they would let you get the kids meal or like a half size like if I order pasta anywhere it is way too much yeah so I like think I, can agree with that. I get what you mean with doing the Culver's thing but like other places I really wish they wouldn't give you so much food sometimes because I hate leftovers just not my favorite the HBO show the leftovers no I've never you seen hate that. that show I got into I'm that show. Watching family ties. Yeah, <laughs> you are busy. I don't know if anybody that's on this recording right now has ever watched The Leftovers. My parents and I have been watching it for the last like month. It's a three season show. Um, and it is fine. Um, it's I haven't reached the end of season three. And I'm hoping, like, fingers crossed, and no, please, no spoilers, anybody. That would like ruin my my day. But I'm fingers crossed that they like they give some answers because to me right now, the show kind of seems like it's have you ever seen Lost? Yes. OK, good. Lost is Lost is great. Like it gets yeah. kind of crazy at the end, but it's still like pretty yeah, awesome. Confusing. Um, and, you know, we can this can be a segment. This can be this could be the last segment. We can throw a deep question in there at the end. But this has been fun. I'll just um, start crying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to watch Family Ties and I don't know anything else. Um, it is what Leftovers feels like is Lost. Like they tried to do what Lost did, but they said, you know what, what was the best part of Lost? This is me as like a like if I was the TV writer. I think they said, you know what the best part of Lost was? The confusion. And then they just like laid that in for the whole show. Mm -hmm. The whole show is just like, random things that happen and it's just like confusing thing on top of confusing thing on top of confusing thing and they give like tiny little answers but they're nothing compared to the monumental questions that they're drinking so i'm really hoping that they tie it up in the last five episodes here but um the leftovers that was uh I, that that was because you said you hate leftovers at um at different fast food places. I guess here's a, here's a question about gatherings. Um, when you, did you ever go like into a, would you ever go into a fast food place and like eat with friends or was it always drive through? Um, when I was in high school, um, my friends and I would late at night go like into fast food restaurants Damn. and like be just delinquents. I would never do that now. Go in and, do a crime when no everything. it's just like we were just like goofing off and being loud and like if i see kids doing that now i'm like oh my goodness like shut up yeah of course because you're 85 years old <laughs> we, we know everything about you is an elderly <laughs> woman when but, i see kids goofing <laughs> off. but not anymore i just did in a high school like maybe once or twice in college but not like i did in high school do you still do it um with flame burger i do but that's not really fast food it's like it's way better it's like greasy you know flame burger right i don't actually what is going on with you okay well as what if i wait what if i told why would i go to flame burger yeah i guess that's true i forget that you so, but i've never even heard of it is there one in lifestyle? roseville um there's two of them around bethel i can't remember exactly where they're at one's on like rice street am i correct is one, on that is one by old chicago wrong. no Oh, maybe no. I'm thinking of something else then. They're they're both like within 10, 15 minutes of Bethel. Dale, Dale Street is where one of them is. Um, yeah. It's like an old style like diner and it's open 24 seven. Oh, um, wow. And it's, it's, you have to go and Central. So it's Dale and Central are the two. Um, and then um, you have to go at like, at like 11 o'clock or later. For There's it to be so good, many good reviews. Good experience. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, it's just like it's greasy diner food, which is good. Like it's all just yeah. like on a big flat top grill, and it's just like breakfast food and burgers. Which I guess for you, it, it's not the the stuff. Like you don't want to go get 
get a salad at flame burger but yeah it's i mean it's it's great stuff they have um, grilled cheese and it's super fun um they do have grilled cheese yeah i guess you could have that um, okay so do you think oh they have veggie burgers too oh my gosh yay that's so exciting i'm gonna go yeah hit it so up. do you think food brings people together Nice tangent into a deep question. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what am I going to say? Say no. Um, yeah. I think, I think if you there, I mean, obviously there's times where you're just like eating alone and stuff. And I don't think that's always like super <laughs> sad. So sad. I don't think it is though. I think like as a, as a society, we've like made the, the idea of eating alone, this like horribly tragic no, thing. I, I don't think it's sad. It was just the way you said it. Like oh, sometimes yeah. we just like eating alone. Sometimes <laughs> we eat alone and cry about it. It's really nice tuna melt. Scott made a nice tuna melt and he's showing it off. He said that he put way too much Miracle Whip on it, which just made my mom gag. I can guarantee you. Um, she hates Miracle Whip. Uh, yeah, food absolutely brings people together. I mean, like some of my best memories growing up have been like at family dinners at like different holidays or just like my mom is an incredible cook and my dad is also a really good cook and they would just make food and we would all um, just hang out and, and eat it and, and have a great time. And we would always um, my parents always like their kind of thing that they would like splurge on when I was a kid um, was like going out to nice dinners. Sometimes mm -hmm. like we'd go out a really nice meal once a year to celebrate my mom's, um, my parents' anniversary, which is today. Happy oh, anniversary, oh. mom and dad. Yeah, um, so that's pretty exciting. And we'd celebrate that and my, both of my parents' birthdays. My mom's birthday was on the 21st, just this week. And um, yeah, so we'd go out and have a really nice meal and we all like food and it's great. So yeah, I think it absolutely brings people together. And especially during this time where you can't go to a friend's house for a meal or mm -hmm. you can't, go and hang out like in high school i would go and we'd sit in the corner booth of a cul of the culvers in baldwin wisconsin and we would go late and eat um eat double butter burgers and fries and stuff and custard and we would get there and the culvers would close at 10 o'clock but we would always be there past close and they'd let us like hang out and we oh. knew that it, we knew that it closed because the music would shift from like this chill acoustic guitar to like hardcore hip hop <laughs> and dubstep and stuff. And it was awesome. Like you knew Culver's lit up when the cleaning <laughs> crew came out at 10 o'clock. Awesome. But um, yeah, I mean, it's tough that, that we can't, we can't get together with people and, and go and eat food. Cause it was, it's always been like a, for me, at least, like, hey, what do you want to yeah. do? Hey, let's do flame burger. Let's go to Old Chicago. Let's get a meal, hang out. Like, yeah. it's that passive activity of going and getting a meal that then sparks a like, great conversation and stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. I think what are I think some like there are some cool things that people might be doing, like having meals over Google Hangouts and stuff. Do you know of any of that? No. Um. Not End that I'm. <laughs> no, not that <laughs> I'm aware of. Um, when my dad growing up, he was gone, um, weekly in North Carolina for work. And we do, he, we do some like virtual hangouts, like FaceTime where he could be at dinner with us. Like, Oh, that's really um, cool. But now we're all in the same house and we have been going either my dad has a brother and we're closest to him and him and his wife live in prior lake on a hobby farm we've been going there once a week or they'll come here once a week and we'll just bring like some pastries like coffee cake that my mom made or whatever like sh my aunt made scones that were so good and we'll just sit outside far away from each other and visit um oh fun at the hobby farm Yes, or here on our driveway, which is like way less of a cool experience than sitting yeah. out on their like deck looking at a field. But uh -huh. um, because I wait. think oh, go ahead. A, a hobby farm. A hobby farm is just a farm for animals that don't do anything, right? Yes. Okay. 
so but they don't like, have any animals right now. They have two cats and a dog. So they just oh, have like, so it's a animals. house. <laughs> yeah. It's a house with a field. Oh, they had um chickens and their neighbors had cows, but they like to travel, so I don't know what they're wanting to do. But for our family, I think being together and being present is really important. I just think over a screen, it's a completely different experience and it yeah. doesn't feel real in a sense. So yeah, for it's, us, it's um, nice to be able to like for, I feel bad for families who live in different States. I mean, we can drive to our family, but yeah. other people just can't. And it's just mm -hmm. sad. So I'm sure it's working great for them, but for us, if we can be together, we want to be. So, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it's not going to last forever. Hopefully. Right? Yeah. That's but, the um, thing. Crazy. Yeah, I didn't like gatherings over Google Hangouts. Although, like, it is such like it's so awesome that we can do mm -hmm. this. Um, yeah, but yeah, it gets like tiring. It just, I mean, sometimes it feels kind of forced. Like, yeah. oh, I guess we have to just like start this conversation topic mm -hmm. where it's like if you're with somebody, it's just like very natural and you're there. Um, yeah, but you know, it's yeah. I mean, I'm grateful for the fact that we can do this stuff. Like, I can yeah. see you and Will. Scott and Sam and like we can hang out on this past and that's a great time um and a lot of other things but yeah um so boom we got in the obligatory deep question but we also talked a lot about Culver's go to Culver's support local business you've been listening to life is a podcast from the clarion Bethel University's national award-winning student publication. We'd like to thank our producer, Sam Mulberry, and Craig Culver for creating the perfect menu. The Clarion still publishes stories every day online at BethelClarion.com. If you want to check if your major was affected by the faculty cuts, check out the recent stories about that. Please tell the people in your life about Life Is, which drops Monday and Friday until we run out of things to say. Also, check out seektextura.com to read some awesome student stories from Haryana, India. Now I'll say my line, because ultimately, life is people. So tell your spring sports teammates. And tell Scoopy from Culver's. And tell Frodo, excuse me, I mean Mumble from Happy Feet. And tell everyone you know to get a Kentucky Universe account so they can play with Zach and Will. Please do that. Bye.